right we back again now it's time to log in okay so let's go to our login class here let's close our database class and we are in the user class.php so i want to come to this login section here now most of this is going to be exactly the same so i'm going to copy uh from the sign up here just a few of these things up to actually i can really copy everything so copy everything in there and let's uh, paste here like this goody okay so let's pass through this and see what we need so so far we have an empty array for our data good we've instantiated our database and let's look at what we need here so we need the what does it say email address and name this doesn't make any sense so what we need is email address and um it's email address and password this is what we need here so let's go and do some changes into the front end for a, for a bit here uh where is this login.php and also there's something i forgot in the sign up part where if in case somebody enters the wrong information the page comes back empty so it should at least give the user some extra information so we're going to do that i might do that in the next video but definitely we will do i'll show you how to make sure that the information is not lost the user might give up if every time there's a mistake they have to start all over again okay so here in the login we have to give these guys some names for us to be able to use them so let's type name here and let's change the placeholders so first of all the email should go one step higher let's let's put this email at the top down here let's change this to password so this will be a type of password and the placeholder will be password and even the name will be password and this one the name will be email what else here mm, okay so we have our name we have password i think we are good to go so let me refresh and there we go so email address and let's put our email address let's put our password here let's just put a wrong password for now and what i'm going to do now is go to because we need to capture this information somehow so i want to go to the controllers now we already have a login controller which is nice and dandy but we have to redirect this uh the information we get here actually for now let's just do the same thing we did that side so i'm just going to say show what's inside the uh, the post variable like so just so to make sure that we are receiving something okay so i'm going to say login and as you can see there's an empty array here that's because uh, when i loaded this it didn't have names so now that we have names let's do it again login oops okay so what's happening here is that this array is empty the post array is empty but if you look at the uh the link here you see that there's email and my data is inside here so if your data happens to be inside your url what it means is that you're using the get method to send your data that is not very secure so we don't want to use the get method so uh, in order to sort that problem out we go back to our login page in the views and then it means we have to change our form from uh, let's remove the action we don't need that we have to change our forms method so let's put method and let's put post good okay so let's try again let's me put thingy and a fake password okay so now we have some data here awesome so now let's check this email and password so let's go back to 
our let me get the sign up controller here because this part here is exactly the same so i'm going to copy all this copy and go to the login controller and just paste it right there paste good so if the request method is post uh load and then user sign up now instead of sign up we're just going to say login okay good so at this point, uh, we are telling it to log in. So we are done here. We just have to go to the user class because that's the one we are calling and in the login section. Okay, so as seen here, we need the email and password. Those are the two things we need. So there's email, there's password. So let's delete these other guys that are useless. So we keep these two, good. So if not empty data email and we could leave this one to match the email. That's fine. Please enter a valid email. That's okay. And then we can look at the name, uh, which we don't have here. We just have email and password. So useless part out. And we don't need to match the two passwords because there are no two passwords. So out. We don't need to know whether the password is... Uh, eh, we could leave this one there. Why not? So, or we could just check if it's not empty, but this is fine too. And what else here? Check if email already exists. We don't need to check for this. So instead, actually, we will use this to actually check if the user exists. So let me remove this URL address creation and even this URL checking, it's useless. Okie dokie. Mm -hmm. So, if all this is good, uh, then we can move this guy into here. So, first of all, we don't need to create the rank. So, out. So, save. Nope. Confirm. Something like this. So, we don't need to create the date. We don't need this password hashing. Ooh. We actually do need the password hashing. Surprise, surprise. Okay. Now, remember one thing here is that... Uh, let me go back to the table. Now, remember that the password here that we... Uh, this hashing is one way. So what that means is that once you hash your password, it's impossible to, re to undo this hashing. So if I look at this, even if I had a computer, I could not recreate the original password. It's not possible. Maybe it could be possible with very powerful computers and if you had a hundred years to do it, maybe. But, so how then do we know if the user has entered the correct password? So what we do is that whatever password that the user has entered to log in here, we also hash it. So we're going to hash it exactly the same way we hashed the original one they entered. And because it's the same password, it's going to give us exactly the same hash result. So then we can compare the two results to know whether our password is correct. Right. So here at this point, data password is equal to hash. That's good. So now we have one item in the data. And what other item do we have? Okay, so that's the same password. And so we have email and password. Good, 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 good. So at this point, let me get this part cut it because it's it's used for reading so i want to read also from the database i will paste it here like so and then i will use result here because that's what's here so i will use result and put it there very nice so instead of this array here we will use the data array like that and let's remove these guys here we don't need that mm -hmm. okay so now select all from users where email is equal to email and then we'll copy this and say and password is equal to password 
password is equal to password like so limit one we just need one so that's cool so there we go we read and if it's the result is good then we redirect the user to the login page oh not to the login page sorry to the home page so I'll just type home at the end there and then I can remove this over here mm -hmm. but if it doesn't go well then we'll just show the user our errors now the thing is the the website needs a way to know that the user has been signed up because otherwise if we don't do anything here we just redirect them to the home page the home page will have to ask them again are they logged in or not and then they have to log in then it becomes an endless cycle so since we have this variable called session which is always available everywhere on the website once you set the session it's available even when you close the web um, until you close your session until you close your browser so it's available on every page so it's called a super global so let me copy this super global and use that to store some information so i will store this information in a variable name called user i'll just call it user id or user underscore url like so so user url is equal to and here what do i say i will say um, the result here so actually copy result here and put it in there because we have to check for result so if there is actually a result here then i will put this here now remember this returns an array so if the item is one there's just one item we have to get the first item in the array and not just the whole array so i'm going to put a zero there that's the first item and then inside the first item i will get my url address like so good so we we'll put that into the session and that's all we need to do is to check for this guy in the session then we will know that we are actually logged in so let's give it a try now remember we have no way to see our error messages yet so let's go down to in the views to sign up here and i'm going to copy this error part there and put it in the login.php as well let me go back to the sign up see just above the column so where is the column that's the column right there so paste like so so let's try again oops that didn't seem to work so let's try one more time okay so it's just refreshing and not showing us uh, anything so not a good sign so let me come back here and let's see where it's being it's hanging up here so function login so let's go back to make sure that we're actually getting here into the login class okay so what i will do here is just tell it to show to show me the post right there copy and paste like that uh -huh. so now let's try one more time okay so the fact that it's showing me that it means we're actually getting to this point so all i need to do now is just cut this thing and paste it in different places and see if it still shows up so there's only this if statement here if error is empty so let me try and put it in there to see if we are getting to that point so refresh and we are getting to that point which is very good so it's coming up to this place here so maybe where it's not going is inside here so select all from users okay so what this means is that we are not finding the record and as it should be because there is no such record here so the only thing is that we are not telling the user that um, 
we haven't found your, your login is incorrect. So let me copy this and just after here, down there, let me put the error and say wrong, wrong username or actually it's wrong email in this case. So wrong email and a password like this actually or so we don't want to be very specific here we don't want to tell them whether it's the email that's wrong or the password that's wrong that's a security feature so that they don't really know because somebody if somebody really uh, has a login details to your website they should know their email and password so don't give out too much information so let's come back here and let's do a refresh and so we get wrong email or password so then we can get to try again, right? So let's try something legit, like password, enter. And there we go. So now we have been redirected. Okay. Apparently we have a problem here. So cannot use object of type class, SDD class. That's a standard class as an array. So where is this user? dot php in the class on line 107 so let's come back to line 107 so which is right there mm -hmm. so what it's telling me here is that i'm trying to use a class as an array so i definitely know that this session is an array so it must be talking about this guy now remember that in our database we told this thing to be returning an array of objects so an object is a class so it means this is the problem right here so it's an array which means this part is good but then it's an array of an object so this part is wrong so at this part let's remove this and let me do that i'll put an arrow there instead and we should be golden so let me refresh and bam, we are on the home page. So how exactly do we know that we've actually been logged in? So one way to know is by, let's echo out, let's try and echo out our session. Because remember, we've assigned a value inside this session. So let me copy this and let me go to my views, eShop and header. So what I'm looking for right here is this info at domain.com. So where are you, my man? Right there. So let's add our own here and let's put our, our session ID. So I'm just going to put some PHP tags over here. And what I will do is echo out. Now, remember one thing. Uh, Oh, actually, the session is available everywhere. So let's do a quick one here. Let me just paste the session and then close like that. So question mark, uh, PHP tags like that. If you put the equal sign is exactly as saying PHP echo like so. Same thing. So instead, I'll remove this and just put my equal sign there. Same thing. So let's do that. And as you can see, it's right there. Okay, so instead we can put a different font awesome here. I don't know if I um, actually don't use font awesome. So I don't know if there's one called user. Oh, apparently it's there. So let's see. And let's put a space there. Oh, wrong place. Spacey here. So let's try and uh, try that. Okay, that looks much better. Okie doke. So you can see our session ID there. Now, in the next video, we'll see how to, instead of showing the session ID, we show the actual user that is logged in. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video.